Hey everyone, my name is Crystal. I'm with the Thrifty Nichols. I'm a part-time eBay reseller and I also have a vintage booth here in town locally. Um, and I want to talk to you today about setting goals for your vintage or antique booth. So happy April 1st, April Fool's Day, my least favorite holiday. It's something I wish they would <laughs> just you know not do anymore just like daylight savings let's get rid of daylight savings and let's get rid of april fool's day the worst um but that's off the topic but it is the start of a new month which means we have a whole what 30 days um, to meet our goals for our booth and to um, see where we want to be for the rest of the year so i want to talk to you a little bit about why i started my booth and i'd love to know in the comments below why you started your booth. So I am very new to this and I hope that you take any advice I give with a grain of salt. I know there are people that have done this for so much longer than I have. I'm a newbie here and I just, I'm here because when I first started, I couldn't find a ton of information. And so I'm just sharing what I've learned with people that are considering starting a vintage or antique booth. Um, so, when I first started selling online, probably about a year and a half ago, first of all, I've always thrifted my clothes. Everything I own is from Goodwill or a thrift store. Um, and it never occurred to me, I never knew that people can make a living selling used items online. I just, and it blew my mind. I was on TikTok one day and um, I started following all these people that was talk about what they sold and how much money they're making. And I jumped in with, you know, full force. I'm ready for that. I currently work full time. I have two kids, I'm heavily married, but I don't know how long my full time work is going to last. I certainly don't want to ever go back into an office. And, um, you know, that's how we're all feeling, I think. Like, we all had to work from home and most of us i would say 95 percent of us want to continue working from home and um, i'm able to do so for now but who knows how long that's going to last um, and i've always worked for small companies and i have been eliminated immediately when that company sold out to another one or um you know things like that so my job is not secure and so i was sort of looking for a way to replace my income without having to have a commute and be in an office full time. So that's why I started um, selling online. I started with clothes and just things in the house. And let me tell you, it is, um, I feel like if you're gonna sell online, you should have that first year where you just have no clue what you're doing and you have to dig through and figure it out for yourself. There are so many resources online to help you learn, but really, you really need to just do it yourself and, um, and figure it out um, so you know and you won't make those mistakes again so um, about six months into selling online I found that I really love vintage items and vintage clothing and that some of my vintage clothing just wasn't selling and my thought was wouldn't it be great to have a little space where people could come try on clothes you know see if they like it because you know they could touch and feel and that makes such a difference when people can touch and feel items um and see it in person <clears throat> and plus you don't have to worry about shipping so i did a ton of research went to all my local booths and found the one that i thought was the best in my town and lo and behold they had a booth available and I, something about me that I don't, <laughs> I have social anxiety. I didn't used to, but it is so bad now. I had to pump myself to go up to the front desk and talk to these sweet ladies about, do you have a booth available? And at some of the places I went, I didn't even ask them. I just, the vibe was off, so I didn't even worry about getting my courage up. And that's so silly to even think about that I didn't have courage to ask if they had a booth available. But, you know, it, Things are so different these days. People are um, just, what we've been through with this global pandemic has just changed the way we think. And I have a really hard time speaking to people in person. And so that is why YouTube is good for me. And um, why having a vintage booth is good for me because I don't have to meet my sellers face, to, or my buyers face to face. And um, you know, I can see them if I want to, if I want to hang out in the booth and hang out in the store, but most of the time I don't have to. So I got off track a little bit. Um, so I found a place, they had a booth for rent. It was $216 a month. 
And um, I went ahead and jumped in because in my bank account for my eBay store, which I did start a separate um, bank account, um, I had enough money to cover the year or to cover the six months because it was a six month um, contract and then it's month to month. So I was like, all right, if I sell nothing, I will be okay and I can pay rent and it was a fun experiment and I'll get out of it. So that was my thought going into it. Um, and I did talk to them about my idea for my vintage clothing and they said, well, we don't really allow vintage, we don't really allow clothing um, except on a case by case basis, but all you have to do is, you know, set up your booth, take pictures or set up your booth at home and send us some examples, send the owner some examples. Um, I took amazing pictures and I got rejected. Um, so I was kind of like, okay, I have like half vintage goods, half vintage uh, clothing to put in my booth. So I had to scramble and do a lot of things um, to, <laughs> to get ready for the booth. I was a little upset about it, but I understand now, even though there's a booth that does have all vintage clothing now, but I didn't say, I have not said anything. And it's totally okay because it's fine. Um, vintage clothing is better for a wider market like on eBay. Um, so that is why I started my vintage booth um, just as an extension of my eBay store and to hopefully help people to um, go to my eBay store. So, you know, kind of working both, way, both ways, um, building a brand and a presence, um, both online and in person. Okay, so on to setting goals. So like I said in the beginning, I did a ton of research and I found this one amazing video. I'm going to link it either in the description below or somewhere on this video. And it is actually a worth point video that features a um, reseller named Adirondack Girl at Heart. And she has a PowerPoint presentation where she goes through the specifics of the best formula to help you um, build your antique booth business. And uh, I just watched it again, and it's just, it's so relevant to what we're doing today. I'm actually going to use some of the information and share it with you, but I'm gonna add um, some more goals at the end of just some things that I'm gonna be working on and things that um, I've, I've learned. And so the first thing is um, in your booth, you need to create a balance. And um, I hope you enjoy my messy house in the background and the cats going everywhere. Um, Sorry. So balance. When you design your booth, she recommended this and it's so brilliant. I love it. Um, so, you know, big items, medium items and small items. We always talk about smalls, um, but we don't really talk about bigs and mediums. Um, so she recommends 25% of your booth should be big items. And now how you define big, medium and small is totally up to you, really. Um, I will show you a picture um, once I've gone through this of my booth and I, what I think is big, what I think is medium and smalls. Um, so back to the point, 25% big. And that could be hutches, bookcases, um, cabinets, anything, you know, large that you can display items on. The second thing is the mediums and that should also be 25%. So mediums, um, end tables, uh, maybe desks, um, yeah, things like that. And 50% of your booth should be smalls. So that is a lot of small items because that's what sells. I mean, I go through, I try to go through on a monthly basis what has sold in my booth and it is most of the time smalls and I have made rent just on selling smalls, luckily. <laughs> um, but I thought that was just so brilliant and it's a great thing for us to keep in mind. 25% big, 25% um, medium and 50% small. So um, I'll show you a picture here of um, my booth as it is today. I do have a new piece of furniture, this hutch that I painted blue with oops paint from Lowe's, I think. Um, I thought it was black, but it turns out it's very dark navy, which turned out awesome. I love it. Um, and of course, I immediately broke one of the pieces of glass on the cabinet. So um, don't follow me for furniture advice because I am terrible with furniture. But I did find these metal sheets at Home Depot that I, I just love the way they look. Um, 
So it's it's okay. The piece is fine. I think it's it's nice looking uh, from a distance, but don't look at it too closely. And plus, it's really going to help me display some pieces, some um, dishes, and and smalls um, as we move forward. So that is my biggest piece. I also have a very large painting <coughs> that I found um, in a thrift store for fifty dollars, and uh, two bookshelves and a cabinet. Like a, I mean, like a sofa table, that's actually what it is. So those are my bigs. My mediums are um, end tables, some of these small tables, the rocking chairs, um, and the chairs. I have like a large collection of chairs for some reason. Um, and then smalls, it is, my booth is a mess. I have so much in my booth right now. And I think that is the brilliant part of her plan, is that you can stuff it up with so much stuff and um, <clears throat> with the goal of being to sell more. So that is all about the balance. Of course, in her video, she discusses things like um, the focal point. You should, your booth should have a focal point um, that draws people in. Mine, I don't think is really defined um, in the pictures, but I do have a very open booth in the corner where I can, where I set up like rotating displays for Easter, for spring, for, I'll do a big Halloween and Christmas display right there. That's kind of what I think is my focal point, but I'm not really sure that it stands out that much right now. Um, she recommends rearranging weekly, which of course is a great idea, and um, adding more products um, on a weekly basis. Because as we know, people, we get the same um, visitors that come through and just, I've actually seen someone who I assume is an interior designer and she'll just kind of run through and see what she has, like super fast. She's like uh, scanning each booth to see if there's anything she needs. Um, so you got to keep your inventory updated. So that's really on the basics of your booth design and what your booth should look like and what sort of inventory um, you should have in your booth. And of course, like the specifics of what, you, what you're selling, that's completely up to you. If you want to have farmhouse, if you want to have true vintage or antiques, um, or if you want to do crafts. I mean, you know, some of that depends on what your mall allows, of course. Um, mine is really open, except for clothing. That's the only thing that they've ever said no to me about. So um, crafts, furniture, um, and true vintage pieces are always welcome. Okay, and the next thing that she had mentioned in her video, and this is the Adirondack Girl at Heart, that um, it's just a great resource. You should just go watch the video after this and um, you know keep it on, keep it in the back of your head. So she mentions that whenever she purchases an item to sell, she won't purchase it unless she can sell it for four times what she pays for it. So I think I, I had that mixed up in my mind that I thought it was three times, but four times it is, it's a great way to think about it when you're out shopping and sourcing for your booth. So if you buy something for $10, you should expect to sell it for $40. I have not been doing that. Like I said, I've been doing more of the three, three X, um, so I'll, I'm going to consider that moving forward. And now my goal for April, and this is what I'm doing this video for, and what she recommends is that your booth every month should make three times rent. Um, I have only gotten close to that once. And um, with this formula that she's given with the balance and the focal point and um, the rearranging weekly, I feel like you really can't not make your goal. So I've always made rent and March was actually not that great of a month. I think I might make a hundred dollars, um, which is the lowest since I've started. Of course, I'm happy to, happy to have made that much, but um, with the bigger furniture and the more smalls, just the pure amount of smalls, you're going to pull people in and they're, they're going to love it with all the smalls they have to look through. Um, so yes, my goal for April 2022 is to 3x rent. So my rent is $216. And so I hope to come back at the 1st of March and tell you that I've made that rent. And I have a few more items that I wanted to talk about of how I'm going to get there besides this foundational um, guidelines that she had given us through this worth point video. Okay, the next piece that I wanted to talk about is your inventory tracking. Please tell me in the comments below, how do you keep up with your inventory? 
Um, I, I don't have really a great way to do it. Um, I started out just in Google Sheets. Um, you know, everyone has access to a free Google account and you have basically what is Microsoft Excel um, is, is, it's called Google Sheets in Google. And there's also um, Google Docs, which is like Word. So if you ever feel like you have to buy a, a software program, um, to do all those basic office skills, it's free through Google. And I'll actually put a screenshot up just to show you what I mean and how I'm doing my inventory right now. And um, I haven't been keeping up with it that well, but I'm going to start. So that's my goal this month is to go through my inventory, remember where I got it uh, and how much I got it for and when I put it in the booth. That's an important piece of information too. I do sell through quite a bit, but lately things are taking longer um, to sell. And also I, I get bored with the items that are in my booth. So I will take them out and put them on eBay if it's just, if what I feel is taking too long. In the video that I mentioned, the Adirondack Girl at Heart, her basic uh, plan is for once she puts something in her booth, after six months, she starts marking it down. And then after a year, she will take it out. That is a lot, she's a lot more patient than I am. Um, so I will take things out and either put them on eBay or I'll bring it back in. And just if, you know, it depends on what space is available. But I think that is a good guideline. Six months, keep it in there uh, and start marking it down. And then after a year, take it out and donate or sell online, whatever. And of course, that's completely up to you. Um, I, I don't know that I'll keep track that well of my inventory, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle that. But my goal for April is to get all my inventory updated in this Google document or this Google spreadsheet. And then I, I started out with my tags. So I had business cards printed and that, that had a QR code for my eBay store and you would get $5 off if you, um, if you bought something on eBay. They were just so big and clunky and white. I didn't love them. So, and plus I have terrible handwriting. I'm so afraid that the ladies up front are not going to know what I've written. So my plan is to take the, um, the Google Sheets inventory and create labels and um, print out really cool, fun labels that are easy to read and um, kind of it's less work for me in the end because I don't have to write everything. And that's going to be a huge time saver because every time I'm about to go to the booth, I'm like, oh, I have to write out on my tags. It's such a pain. Um, so I'm hoping that the new system that I'm in process of creating will be better. So I'm happy to link any uh, templates that I create if you're interested in that as well. Okay, so um, creating the balance in your booth, creating your inventory tracking system, and um, two more things that I'm gonna do to help 3X my rent. The first one is gonna be advertising. So I am going to take at least one item per week, and it is probably gonna be one of the bigs, um, and posting it on Facebook Marketplace and others. So I encourage everyone to do that. It helps everyone in the store. So I, I love where my, where my um, booth is because I have the nicest neighbors. They, um, the, one lady does all these beautiful crafts and she posts constantly on Facebook. I always see her posting in the buy, sell, trade groups and I'll like them and say, oh, she's great. Um, but if they come to see her booth, they're going to come see my booth and everyone else there. So I had a conversation when I first started. I said, I'm very interested in building a brand on Facebook and really advertising. And they were like, we totally encourage that. We love it because it's, it's not just for you. It's for everyone. So when you bring, when you bring someone else, someone in, they could shop at every place, every booth here in town. So it really just brings in more traffic for your booth. It brings in more traffic for the store and everyone's happy. Um, so the goal is Facebook Marketplace um, listing an item for sale and you have to post that they have to pick it up at your store and that there's gonna be sales tax included probably. Um, I assume you have to do sales tax. Mine does. Um, so I make it very clear. It's the listing price plus sales tax and you have to go 
pick it up at the store. You can call them and hold it, or you can call for availability. But this is not pick up at my house. I'm not going to meet you. You have to pick it up at the store. Um, so that's worked out for me a few times. I've gotten away from doing it. But um, to help this goal of mine of 3xing rent or more, um, I'm going to start advertising a little bit more. And I say advertising, it's just free posting on um, on these sites. So there are four places that you can consider posting. First one is Facebook Marketplace. The second one is an app called Offer Up. Um, the third one is um, Nextdoor. So you can sell items on Nextdoor and it's an app. Um, and the last one is Craigslist. And you know, Craigslist is a funny, funny place, but um, you're not dealing with the people directly. That's the great thing about having the booth. You are sending them to the store. It's a public place. There's cameras everywhere. There's no concerns about um, who you're meeting and where you're meeting them. But I will warn you, when you post items publicly, there will be scammers. Um, so something on Craigslist, they'll say, oh, um, I don't ever check my Craigslist account. Will you email me here? And so they, anything anyone does to take you off of the site is a no-no. Just say, no, thank you. Um, on Facebook, what they're doing lately is asking for your phone number and telling you to send them a code. And that's just a no-no. Like I said, keep it on the app, whatever app you're in. Don't give any other information except the store out on that, on that site. So I haven't heard of any offer up or, um, next door scams, but I'm sure it's all the same. I've had one person contact me and say that his company is moving him and um, he has to purchase all the stuff on his credit card separately through PayPal. And it's, you know, anything like that. You're not going to go through PayPal. Don't give them your phone number. Don't do anything outside of the app and you'll be totally fine. So that's my warning there when you consider posting um, your items on online. And um, yeah, so I will show you a picture of what I posted this week. I just posted today. So Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday are the best days to post um, on social media for, um, for sales. So we'll see if um, anything comes of this one. Oh, another great point is to have something ready to put in your booth if this one does sell immediately. So if you've been following me, you know that I sold a hutch for 50. I sold a hutch and a cabinet on the same day and I was not prepared to um, put anything in its place. I thought I had something, but it fell through. And so that's why my sales in March were just terrible because I just got this hutch in um, last week. And so be sure you have something to, ready to back up. I have a plan, but I still have to go paint. You can tell I've been painting in the garage like I'm just a mess. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is having an online presence um, and creating a Facebook page. So I do have a Facebook page for my business, but I have been lacking about posting. Um, and, you know, I get dis discouraged because it's usually my mom or just my friends that that like my post, which is fine because they will all go shop and buy my stuff. But I'm like, I want to reach a wider audience. And so if you follow Melanie at Lost and Found Decor, she's great. And she has a, uh, a boot camp for, for your antique booth. I think it should be called a booth camp. Um, I haven't done it, but she recommends um, posting three times a day on Facebook. I'm going to start at one time a day and you have to take a lot of pictures every time you go into your booth. So just fair warning there that you have to be prepared with, um, with content and um, fun things from your booth to focus on, on online. So there's my goal for April 2022. I hope to come back to you in May and with the big news that I did 3x my rent. Um, so let me know if you have any questions about anything I went over. Um, I could put the notes in the description because it's just so great to remember that 25, 25, 50 breakdown and the 4X and 3X and the, all the different things. I'll link to my spreadsheet for inventory. And um, if I get my tags set up in time, I will link that as well. Cause um, you know, you could create something similar for yourself if you're struggling with tags. 
and let me know how you do on the advertising. Um, Facebook Marketplace, it's a weird place and you might get some great response and you might get crickets, so who knows. Um, and then please tell me your Facebook page if you have one. I would love to go like it and um, see what you're up to. So that's all I have today. Sorry this was such a long video, but I've been kind of noodling all these goals for a long time. And I feel like I finally have the pieces in place in my booth to have a great month. And um, that's about it. So like my channel if you're a reseller and you have an antique booth. And I'll talk to you on the next video.